richest uranium, the purest plutonium, comes from these sites, right underneath the ground. We're standing. Right here, right where we're standing. They wanted to move the village. They wanted to get rid of us and move us up on top. But we have our shrines here from the beginning of time. A couple of famous bombs came out of here. Oh yeah, Fat Man and Little Boy. What'd they use us for again? <laughs> Nagasaki, Hiroshima. This is where the main flow, the, the main flow of water that comes through, comes through right here through the village. Right through here. That was all farming area. This is all the jack pile. The mine the site. Mine. Yeah, that's the mine site. These are the open pits. The yellow is the open pits. The blue are the pro ore stockpiles. And then these red ones are the waste dumps. It's very ironic that this one of the most beautiful places in the world is yeah. surrounded by all this uh, poisonous stuff just mm -hmm. to create wealth for a few people. They just put a Band-Aid over it. Today I'm going to take you guys to a real cool spot up on the mesa over here where uh, the serpent was woken. There's no sign on this place. It's a, a military facility that was open about a couple of years ago. This, this is the old Jack Powell uranium mine. It's been closed since 1982. They had some reclamation here, but see, there's a lot of stuff going on that they're not telling the people, and we're here to find out what's up. And I was wondering who those fucking government fuckers are right there. How's that? Wow. I know. What's up with this? If they make it right, we can go down there. We're going down to the bottom of the uranium mine. We're going into the pit? Yeah, we're going right now. Damn. We gotta do this sort of clandestine week. Yeah, we're going down That's there. <laughs> yes. Just kind of keep that camera down right here, Doug. Just like, yeah, yeah, keep it down. Yeah, we're gonna drop down here. This is uh, this is the shell of the serpent that was woken up during the heyday of a the uranium industry in this area. So all the, the hottest plutonium you can get on planet Earth comes from right here where we're going. I hear somebody coming. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to drop in here somehow. Oh shit, dude. Uh, Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, well, this is where it's at. Uh, fuck. Yeah, this is kind of a heavy thing to do, but we're gonna do it. Cause you guys need to see this right here, brothers. Follow me. Just uh, let me get down first before you start climbing down. Just punch, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so rocks don't, don't fall. So don't uh, start a avalanche on top of you. Yeah, there's bears and uh, bobcats and mountain lions around here too. So okay. if you see one, just wink at them or give them a smile. What I do, I just greet them all, you know? What's it? Eat or Yoshino be eaten. Me. Who am I to? God's in the shash, kahanu me you wash, the alku me guish di me. This is uh, the bottom of the jack pile mine. This is what we're on the other side of this tamarack bush. We're going to go see, um, actually, we're going to go see the serpent that was awoken. It's, it's his skeleton. It's his shell that he shed and, and spirit. Now he's out there in the world putting everything back in place. So it's... Uh, or so they say. Well, let's go check it out. What's that smell? It might be a little kitty cat piss or an elk. When you say a little kitty cat. Like uh, little bobcats. You mean a big kitty cat? Yeah, like there's some big lion? ones all over. If you see a mountain lion, you're lucky. Yeah. Because they're stalking you and you'll never see them. Look at that bear print. Check it out. Yeah. Right there, going that way. The last time you were up here, you ran into one. It was turkey hunting, right? And uh, I was up up the canyon further, and I got thirsty, and I said, ah, if I was a bear, I'd go up. I'd be like, <clears throat> honking down, you know, coming down the hill, humping down the hill, and all of a sudden, there's a bear about from, about from me to you, <sighs> scratching the ground, coming at me. And I just stepped back two, two jumps, two steps back, and just hit him with a 22. Yeah, hit him with a 22. No, I, I dropped him right away. Cause I, I figured if I don't if I don't shoot him right, it's gonna be me next. Right. So I shot aimed right for Someone's the heart, and it, and, it, and it just it just let out the most. I don't know. I can't really even explain. How, it was just like it, I felt it in the in the, in the, in the inner parts of my soul, like it just shook me hard, bro. And and after that, there was about ten bears around me, in spirit all around me, and I was just tripping. There might be a couple of lagoons out there, might be pissing off, but I have to show the world. 
Here we go. Well, we passed all seven tests. Yeah. You see him? See his face? And his head? That's it. It goes all the way back into the mine. The serpent is, is a, a basic theme in all indigenous literature, rock carvings, and myths. I think it's the shell of the serpent that was woken during the heyday of the uranium industry in this area. Yeah, it's, this is a prehistoric shrine, bro. This is... I can't, I can't really explain it, but I just brought you guys here to see it and to I, feel I it and to, to breathe it and taste earlier, it, you know? It's not important how we got here, whether it was put here by man or not. In the context of, of this dramatic restructuring of the earth, and the poison that's been emitted from the poisoning of the air, earth and water to make weapons of mass destruction, which is what these mines are all about, high-grade plutonium. This is what they talked about in, in, in the World Uranium hearing, you know, all the Aboriginal people, they said the serpent was awoken from the source of the uranium, which is right here, right where we're at, right where we're standing. And look at it, it's coming right out of the wall. Boom, 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 like it's, like it's going out, boom. The sense that human beings have been disconnected from the natural world to such an extent that we are the most harmful thing on the planet. As technologically advanced as we are, and as intelligent we are, and as much history as we have, as much as we know that we can be as harmful and as selfish as we are, is pretty profound. And anything that's Earth-centered that can come back into our lives and remind us of our connection to the natural world and to each other is important. You were just talking about doing jewelry. Mm -hmm. I'm in the music business, and we both produce things of yeah. value to someone. And yet we get a tiny fraction of the net, the gross amount of money that's generated, which is money just being an exchange of energy between us. If I do something for you and you do something for me, mm -hmm. I give you a guitar just lesson, like you give me a ring, that's a fair exchange of energy. Mm -hmm. But somehow you produce jewelry that, let's say, you get $100 for that gets sold for $500. You produce that jewelry. Yep. Without you, you created it, mm -hmm. you, had the, you conceived of the idea, you did the labor, you got the materials. So without you, there's nothing. Yeah. Everything else is middleman. Yeah, that's, where you, that's the middleman. The middleman. <laughs> there has to be a lot more emphasis and importance and value placed on labor, which is most of us. The people that actually do create, not create jobs, but do the jobs. The people that do the hard work, those are my heroes. The guy that gets up and actually, you go into your dad's shop, which is so beautiful. He's an artisan, he's a craftsman, so are you. Um, you create something from the earth with your hands, which is a value to people. Now, if you took that product, let's say, and somebody blew that, you know, you had to go through 10 middlemen to get to some person on Rodeo Drive or in Scottsdale that's going to buy it for $1,000, and you got 80 bucks for it. I mean, how is that fair? It's happening right now. But that, here, that happens in every aspect of our economy, with everything, with every commodity, with every product, with every service. Everything floats to the mm -hmm. top. We need to flip that around. Yeah. We need to have an inversion of the pyramid. And I'm going to open up a jewelry shop right next to you and your dad, which you guys have a business and we'll have to have a shop. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to work for me. Slave labor, and I'll be making millions driving around in my jet. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, feds are coming back for us. <laughs>